Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us uh, for another uh, Proving Ground uh, workshop slash webinar slash presentation. Uh, my name is Nate Miller. I'm the founder and CEO of Proving Ground. And today I'll be walking through a set of workflows uh, as enabled by the newly available Tracer IFC toolkit. Um, and the Tracer IFC toolkit is aimed at allowing users to connect their 3D IFC files uh, that are created out of various building information modeling tools with Power BI and Power BI being a uh, business intelligence uh, platform that is becoming more and more adopted uh, as a way to analyze data, um, create kind of predictive um, coordinated views of, of data and, and so on. So, I'm going to start with a, a brief presentation before I get into the more of the hands-on demo, um, maybe to help maybe contextualize the uh, use of Tracer um, and uh, different opportunities for how business intelligence tools like Power BI can be uh, used as a, a way to support decision-making and um, the overall workflow with your data. So what is business intelligence? Business intelligence refers to technologies, tools, um, platforms um, that allow uh, users to create coordinated, uh, holistic, uh, predictive views of their data. So you can imagine that in any given organization or on any given project team that there is a wide array of data sources available Oftentimes this data might be disconnected um, or not completely coordinated. Um, and business intelligence is a concept that refers to being able to bring that data together um, and then create reports that give um, insight into the data and the relationships between uh, data sources. Um, we developed Tracer as a way to bring uh, building information modeling data into the business intelligence um, workflow. Um, it is a toolkit that is designed to process building information models um, into uh, uh, data sources that can be read in by business intelligence tools. And we've also developed visualization tools that let you render three-dimensional geometry within the Power BI environment. Um, so the objective being that we can, you know, create interactive reports um, using Tracer uh, and using building information model data um, and, and share those reports and insights with others. Um, we've had a version of Tracer for Revit out for a while now, maybe a uh, little over a year uh, with the second release uh, occurring in January with the 3D uh, component. And we've since in the last couple of months developed a solution supporting IFC files. Um, IFC files refer to industry foundation class files. And what they are are open uh, BIM uh, representational files. So if you think about tools like Revit, ArchiCAD, Vectorworks, um, uh, maybe BricsCAD and um, tools by Bentley and Dassault, um, these are all uh, proprietary platforms and they have their own kind of native authoring format. Uh, so with Revit, it's RVT, for example. Um, an industry foundation class file is an exportable uh, file type that captures building information modeling objects and their data into an open format, which means that you know, if you were to share an IFC file from someone using Revit to someone using ARCHICAD, there, there should be a level of exchange uh, that's made possible by IFC there. Um, and in, in addition, uh, IFC provides some, uh, you know, an opportunity to have archival uh, data formats that aren't kind of dependent on a proprietary modeling application uh, necessarily. So if you were to kind of hand off an IFC file, um, as a deliverable to your building information model project, the recipient of that IFC wouldn't necessarily need to have Revit or um, you know, ArchiCAD or these other platforms to kind of view it and, and, and leverage the data that's inside of it. And so Tracer, we've since expanded Tracer to include uh, a toolkit for processing IFC files. And what this workflow looks like is that you have an IFC file 
um, there is an application that we've created that will um, harvest the information out of an IFC file or a collection of IFC files into an open and relational database file. Um, and this database file can then be connected into business intelligence uh, environments uh, using standard open database connectivity. Um, what this means is, is that, you know, if you think about the spectrum of modeling software that's out there uh, that can support IFC, you now have a pathway for getting your three-dimensional building information model data um, into a business intelligence environment so you can start to present uh, this information. And then because we're dealing with a uh, business intelligence environment, there is perhaps a bigger opportunity to then think, hey, if we're bringing our BIM uh, data over to the, the business intelligence world, well, what about other data sources that can also then be correlated with the, uh, that information coming out of the model? Um, and that's where you can start to envision and, and think about uh, coordinating information coming out of IoT, Internet of Things, uh, sensor information with the, the model, uh, financial information uh, related to the organization or the project, uh, maybe facilities management information um, can all then be brought together into the BI environment. And so you can start to create this kind of holistic or uh, predictive model view of that information. Yeah. Um, this has immense opportunity um, and for the, the, the big concept that is, you know, in some ways in the headlines and, and being, you know, discussed in many digital technology circles related to digital twins. Um, digital twins referring to this concept of having dynamic models that represent the current state of a, of a given project. So if you can kind of think about a building information model representing maybe perhaps a static representation of the building, um, then being combined with IoT information, financial information, facilities management information in the BI world, you all of a sudden have um, some, some opportunity to really create a uh, a correlated um, view of that dynamic data against your your uh, with with your building information model. <clears throat> so uh, what I'll be talking about today is this process of getting data out of these models using uh, the toolkit that's currently up there. So we have an exporter that will take um, IFC files or collections of IFC files and produce uh, an open database. Um, we also have a way to kind of then understand the object records that are in this uh, exported or extracted data. Here you can see a uh, conceptual table of what we're talking about. So the, the data format that we're working with involves itemized objects inside of tables that contain you know, identifiers, categorizations, names, and properties, but they also contain uh, geometric records of the different objects. And so inside of the schema, um, the, a field is exposed for every object record that represents the, the geometry of the object, which means that we can then start to, inside of Power BI, treat the geometry like you would treat numeric data or text data using Power BI's drag and drop interface. We can drag and drop the mesh data of a room um, for example, into Power BI and have it then render that information. Um, and then we can then correlate that with uh, text-based information or numeric information to kind of color override and diagram on top of that geometry and have it be uh, part of the kind of interactive framework of the business intelligence environment. Um, so a couple of quick examples, I'll be kind of building, working with some of these models and building some of this up with you uh, as I move forward. But, you know, a dashboard that uh, lets you parse through uh, a series of different models. This is a, a dashboard that has four different IFC models loaded into the same dashboard. I can, you know, isolate a component of the model. I can drill down into the different specific element categories in the model, such as the floors, stairs, um, furniture objects, and things like that are all kind of exposed in the three-dimensional uh, view of Power BI. You'll notice that this is also a dashboard that's been published to the cloud um, and is viewable in a browser. Um, but you know, this dashboard was composed in Power BI using the Tracer Toolkit and is allowing um, me to you know, slice through uh, 
different models that kind of relate to one another in a, in a single environment. Um, this is a, a, a report that looks at room volumes and spaces um, in a project and um, understands and isolates different data points about those objects. And so what you're seeing here is a report of not only the three-dimensional uh, volumetric of the rooms and spaces for this clinic, but you're also seeing a, a table that's interacting with that visual below that's showing things like the space category, space number. Um, you'll, you see that there is a, a device there for, or a field there for omni class number, omni class referring to kind of a, a, an open standard for space classification um, as being present here in this data set. So we can start to really use this um, kind of information to compose a, a report of this particular facility's uh, spaces and the kind of key data that may, may be uh, important for it. Um, uh, this is a uh, another a, a report again in in Power BI with a 3D visual um, connecting to an IFC model uh, with uh, MEP uh, information. So here's the mechanical system of the project being represented in 3D as well as data points uh, for for those those objects. You can see that it's you know exposing in this particular template a you know the text-based information numeric information and integer-based data that's assigned to these objects are all kind of being reported here through through the the power bi interface um and then you know uh, you know there we can speculate on use cases uh of course uh, all day perhaps with this uh, this is an example that looks at coordinating two models together a structural model and a and an architectural model and showing kind of the overlay of those two uh, modeling systems so you have some rudimentary coordination could occur in the Power BI environment um, and kind of sh show the mashup between a couple of models um, and uh, understand the relationships. So maybe there's a, I know this opportunity for model review and, um, you know, kind of discussing uh, the progress of the design with your larger team. Um, so I'll be kind of walking through some of these uh, kind of opportunities with an example data set here live. Um, and uh, you say that it, uh, you can kind of see it says summer 2021 at the bottom. Well, it, it is past summer of 2021, and we do have the first version of Tracer for IFC available for trial and purchase. So currently, we through the website, we are offering a perpetual license uh, to both the IFC processing uh, tool uh, as well as the visual. Um, and there's also a 15-day trial. So if you're interested in giving this thing uh, a try, see if it will meet your business needs and requirements, um, give it a try. Um, and then there is a perpetual license um, available for purchase. And of course, if you're looking at a more of a scalable um, thing for your enterprise, uh, you're more than welcome to, to reach out to uh, myself at Proving Ground uh, to talk about how we can you know, meet your business objectives with, with this tool. Um, but you know, the aim here is to provide some kind of easily accessible tools that you can you know, download, try out, um, and if you like it, um, pick up a license. So what I'm going to do is jump out of this um, and dive into the actual workflow with Tracer IFC. Um, I, I do want to highlight that you're welcome to, there is a question and answer box um, that you can type questions in or, or um, and, and Steve will help uh, facilitate answers to those questions. If he, if he knows the answer on the fly, if some of the questions seem uh, interesting to discuss, um, I, you know, will, uh, Steve will uh, be the, the MC and call me out and uh, see if we can get, get some answers to those questions in the narrative here. So you should be seeing uh, Power BI um, on my desktop, a uh, blank Power BI file here. I'm gonna minimize this for the time being and focus first on getting data out of IFC files. So I'll be publishing this data set um, after this workshop and uh, of course be following up with all of the attendees here on where to get this data set and, um, and, and templates and, and so on. Uh, but I have a handful of IFC models here that we can work with and study. There's a, um, a clinic, um, IFC file. Um, these are were provided uh, through the um, uh, yeah. There, there's a there's a repository for the the kind folks that are you know um, managing the creation and development of IFC. Um, so these are sample files um, that are kind of uh, available out there in the wild um, that I kind of cherry picked that I thought made 
for good demonstrators. Um, so what we'll do here is kind of work with these IFC files and you'll see that um, we have an architectural one, a structural one, we have an MVP one. And what I wanna do is go through a couple of harvesting exercises um, and kind of show you what types of information is being pulled out of these files first. So um, in order to get to this information, what I wanna do is process these IFCs and turn them into the relational database that Tracer um, has as its kind of uh, data format. So this is gonna basically translate each of these IFC files into a relational uh, database. So I'm gonna activate the Tracer IFC utility here. Um, I did a fresh install of Tracer to kind of guide you through um, what the install steps look like. So when you download a trial or you get the full version, you're first presented with this screen with the, you know, the, the, uh, the ever present end user license agreement. Um, and at this moment, you have the opportunity to enter in a license key. Um, or you can activate a trial. And in this case, I'm actually going to activate a trial. Um, I don't have a license key on hand and I wasn't going to enter one in as part of this webinar. Um, so I'm just going to activate a trial on my machine. So this, this will let you use the, the exporter in an unlimited capacity for 15 days. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to then show me, it popped up on the other screen here. I have multiple monitors. Show me that the uh, trial period has started and um, it will expire on a certain date. So I'm going to hit OK on that. And it's going to then open up the, the interface here. And the interface is pretty straightforward. Um, you have this opportunity to select one or more IFC files to process. I'll kind of show what it looks like to export an IFC file and um, you know, append data to an existing database or batch process IFC files. Um, you then have um, some settings uh, you can adjust. So there are some mesh, mesh tessellation, tessellation settings, which do have impact on the kind of resolution of meshed objects when they come into your, IFC, uh, the, your Power BI environment and are visualized there. Um, you can also choose to not include 3D meshes at all. You might only be interested in the data um, that's in the, mod, uh, in the model and less concerned about geometry. Um, and then there is a, a, uh, an interface here for itemized selection of object types and categories and number of categories. And then finally, there's an export button. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, go ahead and select on an IFC file. Um, I'm just going to process one to start um, just to give you an idea of what this looks like. I'm going to choose this duplex model. It's a small model. Um, but it'll give you an idea of what the process looks like. When I click open, what this is going to do is it's going to list the contents of the file um, and kind of show, give me an idea of the, the, the amount of elements I'm really talking about processing, um, the types of categories that are in this model and whether or not I want to actually process them. So uh, if I only care about rooms, for example, um, or spaces uh, as IFC uh, classifies them. I could say, well, I, I just want to select none um, and I want to you know, find just the IFC spaces. So I'm only going to export in this case, the IFC spaces. Um, I could also uh, choose to search. You know, if this, is a, get, this list is getting lengthy and I'm only looking for say slabs, and I could search for slab and there's the IFC slab um, category um, and so on. So I have in this case, I'm just going to export everything. Um, there's no harm in um, exporting this entire model. It's small enough um, for the demo. So I'm going to go ahead and click export. And it's then going to prompt me to save the location. You'd see that the IFC file name is the same. And um, it's going to have this database extension onto it. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And what this is going to do is it's going to prepare the 3D context, depending on how much three-dimensional information you have in your model. Uh, this may have, you know, may take, uh, a bit to process, usually preparing the 3D context and preparing the meshes is the longest part of this operation. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay there. Um, I do see a question in the chat. It might be a good time to, to answer it. Um, let's see, I have the trial, but can you show how to show elements by room, which elements of the primary categories, MEP, so on. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be kind of going into the relational schema uh, when we get into Power BI, and hopefully maybe that will help clarify some things um, on, on the kind of wrangling of the information and accessing different properties there. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, 
So um, that created a database file. Um, the database file is a relational um, device, a database. Uh, you can see it's in this folder here. Um, it's got the DB. I'm going to go ahead and open up this database. I have a database browser that I recommend um, if you're interested in working with uh, SQLite files. These are really handy uh, to get an idea of the contents of a file. But so I like to show this just to kind of demonstrate the contents of these files um, as a uh, in its sort of raw data form. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Duplex A here. And what you'll see is that um, there's a number of tables. There's a document table, an element table, and a number of parameter tables. Uh, if I inspect the document table, for example, this is going to show me the record information of that document. Um, I can uh, you know, see information where this file came from, you know, what schema version of IFC it is, um, the, the size of the file that was processed, and so on. Um, there are then element tables. These are where you'll start to see the um, element records of the individual objects. So you can see the, you know, for example, these are some footing elements, beam elements, and so on, all kind of itemized out. And there is also this mesh field. Um, the mesh field is represented as a GLTF mesh type. These are stored as text um, records um, alongside each individual object here. So when we get into Power BI, you can kind of imagine we're going to you know, take that mesh field and that mesh is then going to process into the viewer for us. Um, and then there are properties. And so the uh, properties uh, for different objects are represented in these tables here. Um, it itemizes the properties and relates back to the elements using the um, element ID code. So you can kind of see um, element zero um, has four integer based properties here. Um, and, and those are have those names and those have uh, has those values. So um, this uh, schema, you know, clearly relates, you know, document, documents relate to elements, elements relate to parameters. Um, and that's the kind of the, the flow of, of data in, in a way. Um, so uh, what I uh, want to do here is that because I've uh, now uh, exported one model. I'm going to show you a little bit about um, exporting other models. Um, so in this case, what I did was is I exported one, one file uh, to one database. And what I want to do now is maybe select another uh, file here and export it to that same database. We'll see if um, we uh, have any uh, uh, issues here when it comes to kind of Send, sending data to an existing database. And so this is a new database. This is representing the MEP file. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click export. And instead of creating a new file, I'm going to click on the existing file here and hit save. And it's going to then prompt me, hey, this is an existing database. Do you want to replace it or do you want to add to it? And in this case, I'm going to click, yes, I want to add to the existing. And so what this is going to do is it's going to query that file. Um, and it's going to then process these new element records to that existing file here. Um, so it's building that file up um, and it is then, uh, you know, save that file. So this database now contains two models. So if I go to my database browser again, uh, again, a really useful tool for just understanding the raw data here. I can go to my database, I'm gonna to navigate to that location again. Products, Tracer, Workshop, Duplex A, click open, and I'm going to check out my document table again, browse that up, and you'll see that we now have two documents sitting in that single database file. So um, this will now become represented inside of Power BI. If we start to, you know, wanted to parse two different models from the same data source, we can, we can do that now from, from this um, single SQLite database. Um, we can also batch process models out of this exporter. So if I have a couple of models that I want to just send immediately to a single database, what I can do here is say, hey, this clinic, um, I'm going to select both the architectural and the structural model here, and I'm going to click open. And this is going to give me an aggregate report of all the element types across those two models um, in this environment. And I'm going to go ahead and hit export. And 
Um, I'm going to save a new database file. So this is going to save a new database containing those two uh, bits of uh, those two models. So you can see that it's uh, these are larger models, and so it is preparing a three-dimensional uh, context for that geometry. So under the hood, it's you know getting the mesh information, and then it is processing each of the objects, um, building the file, and iterating through um, these different things. I can click move out of Dropbox for that one. The journal file is uh, being authored to Dropbox there. So, so that just did one file and now it's doing the second file and processing the, the structure here. And so what this is then going to produce here in the, the database um, is now another new database here, the DB file that contains both the structural um, and the architectural um, IFC models um, data from there. So now that I have a few databases ready to go, um, I'm gonna transition into connecting to the Power BI environment using this data. And we're gonna go through some exercises of kind of wrangling uh, that information and, and presenting it in different ways. So um, one thing I, I'll highlight here, um, we offer a number of different freely available templates that you can use to start out your um, workflow and exercise. And these are typically what what I personally start with um, in a lot of cases, um, because it establishes um, al already the connections that are needed. And essentially all you need to do is provide a file path. So um, our tracer documentation has a number of these templates ready to go. So for example, if I go to my tracer documentation here and I click Power BI templates, this takes me to the ability to find uh, the Revit templates that we have for tracer for Revit. We also have um, a growing list of templates for Tracer for IFC. And this includes um, visuals um, that are kind of already uh, pre-configured. It includes a blank file where the relational data is, is already kind of referenced. Um, you can build your own uh, report. Um, these are helpful starters. And so what I'm gonna do is you know, start with some of the blank templates and, and walk through um, you know, uh, what's there uh, essentially in this, in this session. So in Power BI, I'm, I have a, a blank Power BI file open right now. I'm gonna to go to open report and I'm going to browse to one of my templates. So I'm gonna to browse to a blank template uh, that doesn't really have much in it. It just has the, the base connections um, that are required to work with this data. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit open on this. And I'm gonna be prompted to um, show or select my, my um, my Power BI file path. So we'll let this uh, new document open up here. Um, and, and of course, <clears throat> um, as is the uh, always the case when I um, open up Power BI files in the browser, it, uh, Windows always drops me into a, <laughs> um, a new um, window that is not the one I'm presenting. So I'm gonna try that one more time here and see if I can get the the interface to stick to the, the current open browser here. Otherwise I'll have to drag windows uh, uh, across the, that, that's better. So when you open up a template for the first time, this is what you are presented with. It's basically saying, hey, let's connect to an IFC file. Um, and what we'll do here is simply copy and paste the location to a database. Um, I'm gonna use this duplex model as the first database uh, that I'm going to look at. So I'm going to you know, shift, hold down shift, and then I'm going to right click and copy the path to that database file. And I'm going to paste that in to this input. And what this is going to do is it's going to reach into the file and um, then, uh, you know, ODBC, uh, that's how you make connections into SQLite files. Um, it stands for Open Database Connectivity. It asks you for credentials. These are not password um, protected files that SQLite uh, creates or that Tracer creates. And so we can simply choose default or custom or Windows and click, you don't need to enter in credentials. You can just click connect um, and that's gonna give you access to the file. So if you, um, you know, ever encounter that message uh, on a Tracer produced as a uh, database, um, in this case, uh, you can you know, kind of bypass that. Um, so that is going through the process of then, uh, you know, it's opening up the template at the moment. 
And what we're going to see in this particular template is not a whole lot of, 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 of information. Um, we're going to essentially see a blank canvas here, a basic table up top that shows the two models that are in this particular database. There's a kind of header at the, at the bottom uh, that's you know, completely editable, of course. Um, but I thought what we do is maybe explore some of the data here um, a little bit and kind of give you the lay of the land. When you open up this template, you'll see that it's making reference to the um, uh, five tables here, document, element, um, integer, number, and text parameters are all represented here. If I go off to the left-hand side, you're gonna see that we have a model tab. And this is um, where, you know, if you have multiple sources of information and multiple fields of data, um, you might be establishing relationships between these, these different data sources or data tables. And with Tracer, the relational structure is represented here in Power BI. So you can see that the listing of documents relates to the listing of elements and the elements are related to the listing of different parameter values um, that are on top of those, those objects and elements. And so we can work this relational structure uh, to compose a dashboard. Um, so I'm gonna start off with a couple of things, you know, pretty simply here over in, in the, the blank report page, and I'm gonna grab the tracer 3D um, visual that I have loaded here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can kind of see what's being kind of rendered and pulled in. Um, this is uh, basically saying, okay, now that you have the visual created, we need to add geometry to, to render. And so what we can do over in the fields tab is navigate to our element table and you'll see that we have a field here called mesh. And the mesh field is storing those mesh object strings that this visual is set up to recognize. So I can take my mesh and drag and drop that into geometry or ID. And what the visual is going to do is it's going to load up those objects, um, process those elements and display them in a three-dimensional view. So this is now the um, all the records from this database across these two models um, loaded up in a single visual. Um, these elements are kind of immediately here selectable. So, you know, if I wanted to select on one element or another, um, that's kind of, you know, base functionality that happens right away out of the box. But let's say I wanted to kind of slice this model up a little bit and understand, you know, what objects belong to what um, model. Um, so what I could do is I could create in Power BI, you create what are called slicers. Um, if you're familiar with Excel, um, uh, slicers are used in Excel to help you with pivot tables. Um, slicers here are used to help you filter your dashboard view um, in, in some manner. And in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna filter this three-dimensional visual with um, based on the model so um, what I'll do is I'll jump over to my document tab and I will find, let's say the name of my document and the name of the, the different IFC documents will serve as my filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that filter in here. And let's say I only wanna see my MEP model now. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to refresh the visual and it's going to only display objects that are in the MEP uh, project. And so you can see we have some model volumes there. We can actually see some plumbing um, in there. Um, but uh, it, we've kind of excluded objects that are in the architectural model. Those are being filtered out because we're using that slicer. Um, we might also want to have a slicer that looks at the category of element. So um, in this case, I'm now, I'm drilling down into MEP, but let's say I only want to look at a certain type of element in the MEP model. Well, I can pull out another slicer um, for this and I can say, you know what? I want to now slice this model up and filter out elements only of a specific category in my um, file. So what I can do is under element, find category, um, and I'm gonna use this as my slicing field. And it's gonna now give me an itemized list of all of the um, category 
categorical types of IFC elements that are currently present in this view. And maybe I only want to look at the, um, maybe the flow terminals. Let's see if that, that produces anything. So here um, it's isolated the flow terminals from the model and is now rendering things like the um, sinks um, and uh, you know equipment for you know the stove and oven on this model refrigerators um, are now being represented here. And maybe I also wanna see then the flow segments so I'll select the flow segments here and it's going to render those. And now you can see the kind of um, some piping and things connecting those terminals together. Um, and that's all being kind of managed by slicing fields of information inside of the Power BI, you know, using, you know, these are, these are out of the box conventional workflows in Power BI interfacing with, with this visual that is, you know, and again, interfacing with mesh data from, from these fields here. Um, so this is uh, kind of, you know, in some ways the basic setup, right? And, you know, a question that we often get is, well, what about attributes? You know, can we start to fold attributes in um, to uh, have them highlighted here or, um, you know, color override different attributes and, and, and things like that? And the answer to that is, of course, um, we have these tables of, of data here representing parameter values, uh, numbers, and text uh, that can correspond to these objects. Now, this is where there is a bit of, you know, a data wrangling and preparation that makes, uh, that really helps you leverage, I think, the power of Power BI. Um, I'll give you an idea of maybe some of the, the data that's there by first creating a table of, of some of this information. So maybe I want to get the um, text values out of my objects first. Um, what I'm going to do is under my visualizations tab, find the table um, uh, visual, and I'm going to go ahead and expand my text properties. And I want to get the name of my uh, uh, um, parameters here. And I also want to get the value of those parameter names. And those are going to be represented in a table context. And so this is itemizing currently a table that is giving me all parameters across all of these objects here um, in the model. If I click in on, say, this, um, this bathtub, uh, what it has done is it has um, isolated the information about that bathtub in this view here or in this table. So now I'm able to see the, you know, uh, different information about the um, the, the parameter values, you can see there's like replicated, there's an omni-class number, for example. So that's classifying that object type under a certain omni-class number. Some of this stuff looks like it's, you know, just a, a duplicate of the name. Um, but there are a few here that are filled out, system name for, you know, cold water and things like that. Um, we can also do the same for, say, um, jump over here and create another table here that looks at the numeric values. Um, and I'm going to find the, the name um, and the value here as well. And let's see if this is reporting any uh, numeric values for this bathtub. So I'm going to click on that and there, there it is. Um, I'm getting some dimensional characteristics about this object um, as represented in the IFC file. So again, clicking in through these objects here um, are, you know, it's you know, creating a responsive relationship with our report. Um, and, you know, we're able to get object data out. So um, what I want to do here is maybe go through an exercise where we are kind of uh, maybe parsing this data a little bit. Um, an example I always like to use um, is related to the kind of use of space, spatial data, rooms, and, and, and things like that. Um, so for my next exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another template here, and we're going to build up a kind of a spatial dashboard, a dashboard that gives us um, reports of areas of, of room ob or space objects, as well as other properties that might be assigned to those space objects. And I think a great um, tool for this will be the um, clinic model that I exported earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and click open. I'm going to go to a new report. So I'm going to browse for my reports again. I'm going to open up another blank template. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the blank report again as well. for Power BI to open up. And of course it opens up on the other screen again, huzzah. You know you love it. I'll put this over here. Just wanted to remember which screen I'm working on. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> All right, so um, here I'm gonna use the other database I kind of exported earlier. That's this um, clinic uh, architectural um, uh, database that has both architecture and structure in it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and click this and do a copy as path. And I'm gonna paste this into the blank template. We're gonna let that load up the, the data here. And this is gonna be a bit, a, a bit more of a sizable data set um, than that, that small duplex model. We'll let that load up. You can see it's pulling in the, the parameters and the, the document records and element records there. Hey, one, one thing to, to mention on that copy path when you right click on a file, if you hold down shift, the copy path option shows up. Yep, that is a, that's, a, that's a great point. I, I think I said shift, cop, uh, shift right click earlier, but if I were to just right click on this uh, and you know, it says there's no, um, you can't, I can copy the Dropbox link. That doesn't help me. What I need is the the path, the directory path to this. Um, and so um, if you hold down shift, right click, that copy as path option pops up. Good point, Steve. Thanks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a, a bit of setup like I did before. Um, I'm going to create a slicer, um, kind of repeat some of those steps from before um, to let me slice my document. Um, I'm going to slice my data by name here. Oh, that is not the one I want. I want the slicer. That was a, actually a card. Um, so that is a, uh, yeah, so there's the, the, the slicer for this. I'm going to click on my architectural um, object. And I'm going to create another slicer that's going to isolate some room objects for me. So we can kind of look specifically at that data. And so I've got that set up here. And what I'm going to do is jump over to the element category and pull that over. And I'm going to isolate the IFC spaces. So this is giving me now a, you know, um, you know, I filter, I've kind of pre-filtered my data before I kind of loaded the model and then, then filtered in this case, I'm pre-filtering my information before I get to rendering the model. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out my I, tracer IFC um, or Tracer Visual, Tracer 3D Visual. Expand that a little bit here. And I'm gonna pull my meshes out. And that's going to render each of these rooms. So what I wanna do is I wanna now go through a process of understanding the different attributes for these rooms and um, one of the, the, the tricks here is, you know, if I were to go say, okay, now I've met my meshes and I want to say, maybe I want to get the areas of each object. I can't just go over into say my, I know that area is going to be a numeric parameter. Um, I can't drag and drop, say this, this value in to the tooltip here to, to kind of view the area, uh, because there are more than just area values here. There's, you know, lots of different parameters here. Um, so I'm going to do. Uh, and I haven't done this before in a workshop, so uh, this is actually kind of maybe some some additional knowledge. And as you get into Power BI, this I think will hopefully open up some really interesting opportunities for everyone as you kind of grow your data wrangling skill set. Is I'm going to go into Transform Data. Transform Data is a an interface in Power BI that lets you perform operations on the data that you're bringing in. And this is extremely powerful. This allows you to establish um, you know, different relationships uh, between the data sets. You can you know, define identifiers, you can merge tables together, you can create rules for replacing values. 
um, filtering out data before it ends up in the dashboard. You can duplicate data sources. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, and it makes the, the, the use uh, leveraging different data types from different sources immensely powerful and valuable. So what I want to do is I want to you know, start to, to use this interface to define and isolate a couple of key parameters that are going to be related back to my elements. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at my element parameter number table. Um, this is where we have our, our information about, you know, lengths and um, perimeter dimensions, diameters and areas, things like that are all stored here. What I want to do is I'm going to right click on this and I am going to um, duplicate this data source. So this is going to create a, essentially a copy of that same data. And what I'm going to do is rename this um, uh, element parameter, num, uh, I'm going to call it element area. So um, this is, it's still a duplicate of the original data source, but what I can do is say, well, I want this um, table now to only reflect the area values of my, of my, um, of my parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck select all, and I'm just going to click area. And this is now going to isolate uh, just the area values um, for this. So I now have just a table um, kind of uh, reporting out the areas. Um, I might want to do the same for the text values here and we get some key text textual uh, information. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. And uh, in this one, um, let's see, what value should we look at getting here? <laughs> A little more. fact, I can search. So for example, there is uh, the uh, Omni class number I was kind of highlighting uh, before. So I'm going to select all, and I'm just going to select Omni class in this case. So I only isolate the Omni class number of my objects. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click and rename this query element Omni class. Omni class, as, as I mentioned before, is a, an identifier that uh, connects back to um, an open standard. Um, for spatial classification. So um, by doing those two operations, there's now kind of two tables here with area and omni class that I can use. And let me go ahead and click close and apply. And that's going to now uh, expose those two um, uh, tables as now available fields um, that I can work with. So we should see those pop up here in just a second. RBI is catching up. There we go. Element areas, element omni class. And what well, we go back to my relationship manager in Power BI, we should also see that these are being related back automatically to our element table here. So, uh, you know, the, there's already um, established Power BI was smart enough to figure out there's a, a nice relationship that, that already occurs here. So, if I go back into um, this view, what I might say is like, well, maybe what I want to do now is maybe I want to color override my viewport here. That's just giving me kind of gray uh, looking spaces and volumes. Maybe I want to color override based on the Omniclass value. So what I'm going to do here is jump in and find the, the value um, and drag that into category. Let's see what these are popping up. Oh, these are giving me empty values uh, for this particular object type. So what I might need to do is just check out my transform data here. And what I might need to do is point to a different value type. So this is giving me Omni class number. What I need to do is maybe find I saw a table 13 bit here. Ah, because I need to load more. That's why.
Yeah, that's what I want. I want. Let's see if the table table 13 category is popping up. That looks more that looks that looks better. And it's reloading, refreshing our visual. And that's that's more like it. So um, that was a, uh, yeah, I just had to find the right property there. But now what's happening is that the spaces are um, being uh, classified now um, using values from the Omniclass parameters uh, to drive um, you know, colors and, and selection sets there. And what I might even uh, want to do um, as a uh, another kind of filter here um, is to say like, okay, well, give me the slicer, give me another slicer and use the slicer as a way to isolate different um, Omniclass values. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And now we see we have a listing of all of the different types of, of rooms here and say, well, show me all the restrooms in this project. Um, and it's going to isolate um, all of those um, components there, um, which might be uh, you know pretty useful to do if you're kind of doing a you know, facilities management type of workflow or you're looking to you know understand different different offices. We also isolated the um, area information for these objects, and so what I might do here is say, okay, well now that I've got my um, three dimensional views of these spaces isolated. Let's use the area values and have those reported as a tooltip um, in this visual. So I'm going to go ahead and take this numeric value here and pull that over into the tooltip. Um, and so if I hover over any of these objects now, you can see that it is giving me the reported area information um, in square meters um, in, you know, as, I, as I hover over these things. And right now it's kind of showing, it's a little, like if I look at the tooltip there, it's showing me value. Um, for Omniclass and then value for area. Um, Power BI is pretty flexible in terms of letting you say, okay, well, I'm going to rename this field. Um, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Let's reestablish you. I think I did remove rename for this visual Omni class space. And then I'm going to rename this value here. area square meter. And that's going to allow me to you know, see um, that information now presented uh, and that, that kind of proper labeling occurring on my visual. Um, we can also start to you know, build up other dashboard components. I've been basically using slicers in this 3D visual. What if I wanted to see a, an area representation by way of a pie chart or a bar chart of these different um, object types. Um, so what I can do here is say, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to pull out, say this stack bar chart here, and I'm going to use the, as a, as a, as a basis of measurement here, I'm going to use my areas, pull those into the axis for values, oh, no, axis for values here. Um, and then I'm going to use the Omniclass name value as my axis. Let's see if this does it. There we go. So what we now have is a bar chart that is showing me the area per uh, space type. So if I were to then drill down into just classrooms, um, that is you know, giving me a bar chart there that's showing me just that, um, you know, that, that information about the, you know, it looks like we have one space uh, amazing, <laughs> a lot, lot there. And this one has more spaces. We'll use kind of look at this for a while, maybe offices as well. So we're now kind of again building up this relationship between these these different things um, and starting to get into the slicing of this information. Now there was a question before about um, <clears throat> uh, navigating around other non-primary categories to come out of the export. So hopefully this this provides you a way with you know kind of accessing some of those other attributes and filtering there. Um, if your objects have an attribute like um, you know a piece of furniture has a parameter value that's being reported either by text or by number or integer that kind of indicates which room it's in. Um, yeah, that's, that's where you would 
kind of access that information. Uh, Power BI, uh, there's not really a way for us to do like spatial analysis necessarily of like, hey, I've got these elements um, on the fly, compute what elements are inside what other elements. Um, you know, Power BI is kind of strictly um, in this context a kind of a reporting tool. Um, so it's not going to do like Salib what Salibri would do, which is the, the level of, of spatial analysis there. Um, I think I just answered that. So yeah, Trey, I think had, had asked, asked that question, closest grid intersection. No, it's, um, we're not, uh, if it, if the, uh, if that information is on the object, um, then yes, it can report it. Um, but Power BI isn't going to perform the, the spatial, um, kind of analysis there. Maybe in a, maybe we can, uh, crack that nut and kind of think about a future feature or something like that. But, um, in, in our view, there's, you know, probably better tools in Power BI to kind of help figure that out. Um, yeah, Power BI is kind of that, that reporting mechanism. Um, I did want to touch on maybe styling the visual a little bit, you know, looking at look and feel uh, and, you know, some of those other considerations. Um, so when you create a visual here, um, any visual, you have what are called uh, format options. So we've supplied the fields in and there are these um, formatting options. So if I wanted to like change the color of this bar chart, change like the size of the text on the bar chart. There are these, these formatting options. Um, the same is true of the Power BI visual. So if you really wanted to change up the look and feel of this thing, either change up the data colors or change up different aspects of it, you can do so through, through this interface here. Um, so for example, if I uh, expand rendering, let's say I want this to be an orthographic uh, parallel view of the model. Um, that's uh, where you can kind of change that setting up. Maybe I want it to be more of a soft shadow shading representation, kind of gives you that ambient occlusion uh, look and feel there. So you can see, um, you know, there's some soft uh, shadows occurring uh, around the, the different spatial models. So it kind of lets you, lets you do that type of thing. We can also do, um, you know, data color overrides. So right now everything's being classified as like a, a, a great, um, you know, uh, these are Power BI assigned colors. So if I wanted to override something, let's say I wanted to change these, um, let's see if I can find one, this office, this is um, other general facility. I'm gonna do this to try and find that in this list here. Oh, there it is, other general facility. Maybe I want this to actually be more of a gray. So it's not like popping out so much in the visual there. Um, you know, that's where you would, you know, override those, those colors. Um, you can also do, let's see what else you can do. Oh yeah. With the color overrides are some, if you were to supply numeric values and you wanted to do more of a heat map type of look and feel, you can do a gradient. So it basically spans between uh, two color selections. In this case, the defaults like between white and this uh, proving ground pink, I guess. Uh, but if you want it to be kind of like between, uh, I want it to go between yellow um, and uh, blue, uh, for example, uh, that's, that's where you can kind of establish that, that type of gradient relationship. Yeah, you can do, do stuff like, hey, let's add a background to this. Like so, yeah, so you can you know, make it, make it fit in with the overall theme of your, of your site. So I hope this is, this is useful. Maybe as like the final step here, what I'm going to do is maybe save as and publish this to the cloud and give you an idea of what, what, what that entails here. So this is example workshop PBIX file. Um, when you compose dashboards on the desktop like this, we're not, you know, our visuals are not relying on an external service like BIM 360. This is a standalone dashboard and it's a, you know, I'm connecting to, to data that is in a database file. All that stuff gets stored statically um, inside of this dashboard unless I, you know, refresh it. Um, so when I go through this process of publishing, this what, what this is going to do, it's going to take the dashboard as I've composed it and um, it's going to publish it to my online workspace. And what this means is that um, when I publish this to the workspace, it means I can share this report with others and they can open it up in their browser. Um, and 
and go through kind of their own exploration with the data that you provide. Um, you can share it internally, post a public link. Um, if I jump over to our tracer documentation, um, we have numerous examples of 2D and 3D dashboards that have been published um, through the Power BI cloud. And so, for example, if I opened up this, um, you know, this is an example of a construction timeline uh, dashboard with a uh, three-dimensional visual and some you know, timeline information. This is composed in Power BI um, using uh, the database workflow that we just described and it allows us to you know, kind of go backwards or forwards in time on the say a construction schedule for how you know, a, a model like this would get built, right? And kind of looks at that, that sequencing. Um, again, published in the web. And what we think is really exciting about this paradigm of business intelligence and the things that we're trying to do with the tracer visual and harvesting of information is that going from that initial file um, with the um, tracer IFC uh, visual, uh, tracer or the IFC file, going to that initial file, processing it through the tracer exporter, using the drag and drop interface of Power BI, we can then arrive to a, um, a visual online on the web that is created without having to write a single line of code, uh, it's shareable with others, no HTML involved, um, and you can start to present your, your ideas with this. Um, so we think that kind of lowered barrier to entry is really exciting and can really help help the, you know, maybe the industry push the boundaries of how data can be leveraged in different capacities. Any anything come through the chat there, Steve? Uh, that that I need to address. Um, uh, like, this re this recording will be available online, um, and I will be sharing some of the sample files that were created here as well. Looks like looks like we've um, we've covered the questions uh, that have come past. Wonderful. Well, might again, be, sorry, it might be worth reminding folks to to look at our website, theapps.provingground.io, um, for more information, download the trial, etc. Yeah. Uh, great point. Um, to round it out, yeah, this is the apps.proofingground.io is the website. Um, you can see that we have a couple of tools available. Um, Semantic is kind of the, the Rhino version of this. If you're a Rhino user and you're using Rhino with Power BI, you can use this. But if you're using Tracer, there's uh, the Tracer section, a bit of an overview. Um, you can get to the documentation. Um, there is a 15-day trial, and there are two flavors of Tracer available. There is a Revit version, um, which also has a 2D visual for like representing space plans and things like that, 2D and 3D. Um, and then there is the IFC version, which we've been using in this, this session. And there are separate trials for, for each one. So if you're interested in this, give it a, give it a shot. Um, we're always interested in feedback, um, ways to improve on this. Uh, as we go. And we also have many ideas in the future for how Tracer might uh, grow and expand um, moving forward. All right. Well, thank you. Until next time. Cool. Thanks, everyone.